Okay, we are here with our, our next presenter. And hello again, everyone. I'm Aaron Lieberman. I'm the Cloud Practice Manager at Big Compass. And I'm an API design and security specialist and evangelist. I'll be your MC yet again for this stage. And I'm very excited to announce Gobe Harona. And he is the, um, let's see, Director of Product Management at Open Geospatial Consortium. And he'll be talking on spatially enabling web APIs through OGC standards. Very much looking forward to this presentation, Gobe. And you can go ahead and share your screen and take it away. OK. Um, hi, Aaron. Uh, can you see my screen? I can. OK, uh, great. Uh, well, thanks so much for this opportunity to speak to you about spatially enabling web APIs through OGC standards. So my name is Kobe Hobana, and I work for the Open Geospatial Consortium. Uh, first, uh, before I delve into the uh, detailed aspects of my uh, presentation, let me just give you an overview of the OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium. The OGC is a global consortium representing over 500 member organizations from the government research and academic um, sectors, as well as the private uh, industry uh, sectors as well. Uh, we are a con consensus-based open standards uh, organization focusing primarily on location information, so geospatial information. Uh, and we are seen as a hub for thought leadership and innovation for all things related to location. Uh, OGC offers a neutral and trusted forum for tackling interoperability issues within and across communities, uh, not just within the geospatial domain, but in any community that makes use of location referenced information. So as I mentioned, we have more than 500 member organizations from the commercial government resources. And those organizations join the OGC for a variety of reasons, for instance, uh, for business development, uh, to expand uh, their brand globally. Um, and then government uh, departments join the OGC to support the operational policy uh, uh, development, as well as to expand their international partnerships research and academic organizations join the OGC to uh, expand our international collaborations and also to help identify opportunities for innovation funding. Now, many of you are probably aware that location information is everywhere. Um, not only is it everywhere, but every single day we make use of geospatial information uh, or location information in several different aspects. So one challenge is how does one then specially enable a web API to enable it to publish um, and uh, to enable an application to discover that API, uh, but also to enable the API perhaps to integrate location reference information. Those are some of the challenges that as API developers we encounter every single day. Uh, and this presentation is going to talk to you about how to specially enable uh, your web APIs. And we use a five-step process, which you can see on this slide. We use a five-step process to specially enable uh, your web APIs um, using open geospatial standards. So in summary, the process involves identifying the type of location reference information that you would like to publish or access. Now, this could be, for instance, vector uh, feature data, or it could be perhaps raster data. Vector fe an example of vector feature data being, for instance, relational tables from a database or perhaps a spreadsheet. Um, and um, examples of raster data being satellite imagery, for instance, any uh, data set that contains location reference information um, falls within this uh, context. So we identify the type of location reference information, then we identify the related OGC API standard. You then familiarize yourself with the requirements documented in the relevant OGC API standard, and then use the OGC API definition document of the OGC API to help build your implementation. Once you've built your implementation of the OGC API, you then test your implementation for compliance on the relevant 
OGC API standards. So this five-step process, I will explain a bit more uh, as we run through these uh, slides. So what is an OGC standard? Well, an OGC standard is a document established by consensus and approved by the OGC membership that provides rules and guidelines aimed at optimizing the degree of interoperability within a given context. We take into consideration community requirements, market trends, technology trends, other end user needs in order to inform the specification of these OGC standards. We hold quarterly meetings and in between those quarterly meetings, we hold several uh, teleconferences uh, as well. What you can see on this slide um, is a photo taken at, an, at a quarterly OGC member meeting back in March 2018. Uh, so we typically have about 300 uh, delegates attending those uh, member meetings. Of course, since the start of the pandemic, the meetings have been virtual. Now, why consider OGC API standards? Well, APIs have been proven to be a very effective and popular enabler of rapid software development. Now, what we found with the proliferation of uh, APIs and uh, API specifications is that where there's variation uh, in how those APIs handle location information, that variation can, to an extent, degrade interoperability. So given that open standards have uh, been proven to improve interoperability between uh, in independent implementations, OGC has embarked on a program to develop OGC API standards that enhance geospatial interoperability uh, between web APIs. And those web APIs are implemented, can be implemented by any organizations. These OGC API standards follow a number of principles in order to enable them to specially, um, well, in in order to enable web API to hash all data consistent. Those principles include the best practices and the special data on the web best practices document, which was developed by OGC and the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium. But also, OGC API standards leverage the open API specification, specific, currently specifically version 3.0 but we are looking at um, uh, also supporting 3. version 3.1 in the future. Another key principle is that the OGC API standards focus on the developer experience. So they're designed to ensure that they can be as developer friendly as, uh, as possible. So they focus on the developer experience and usability. And we've also designed them to be modular building blocks, modular building blocks that make it possible to integrate multiple OGC API uh, implementations in order to build a variety of uh, solutions. And we're doing all of this development on the public. Um, in the public, using public GitHub repositories, and uh, we're encouraging early implementations in order to help us um, validate the implementations that uh, we are, um, in, in order to help us validate the API specifications and to revise them and ensure that they uh, meet the needs of the market. So what are those OGC API standards? Well, on the slide, you can see an overview, um, uh, an overview of the various approved and candidate OGC API standards. Now, starting from the top left, we have OGC API discrete global grid systems. Uh, this specification uh, specifies an interface that uh, enables access to data that is organized according to discrete global grid systems. Discrete global grid systems being hierarchical tessellations, tessellations of cells uh, that partition the globe um, and enable um, addressing and other um, geospatial uh, functions. Then there's also OGC API records, which specifies an interface for accessing metadata records. OGC API maps, which specifies an interface for accessing electronic rendered maps. OGC API styles, which specifies an interface for accessing portrayal information such as symbology. OGC API tiles, which specifies an interface for accessing tiled data resources such as map tiles 
and tiled feature data, also colloquially known as vector tiles. Then we've got OGC API Common, which specifies the foundational uh, building blocks on which other OGC API standards are built. Then you've got OGC API Routes, which specifies an interface for accessing routing information, such as is used for navigation. And OGC API Environmental Data Retrieval, which specifies an interface for accessing spatial temporal data, such as trajectories. And then OGC API features, which specifies an interface for accessing vector feature data. I'll give you some examples of vector feature data, for instance. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a database that contains any form of location referenced um, uh, information, for instance, postcodes, zip codes, place names, geographic coordinates, uh, all of the, uh, such uh, databases or even spreadsheets can be published through OGC API features. And implementations of OGC API features automatically convert that information into GeoJSON or the geography markup language, um, HTML, and other forms of encoding. Then you've got OGC API processes with, with processes, which specifies an interface for wrapping algorithms within a web API. What type of algorithms? Well, it can be any type of algorithm. Um, some of the examples of algorithms out there include flood modeling, um, for instance, as well as others such as zoning of supermarkets to find the best location to place a supermarket, or perhaps even the best location to place a, a, you know, um, a COVID vaccination uh, center. Uh, all of those types of algorithms can be wrapped inside an OGC API processes uh, implementation. And then finally, OGC API coverages, which specifies an interface for uh, publishing and, uh, and accessing coverage data. Examples of coverage data include satellite imagery. Out of all, all these uh, specifications, OGC API features and OGC API environmental data have been approved. Uh, OGC API features has been approved and published. OGC API environment, environmental data retrieval has been approved uh, and will be published within the next few weeks. So the other specifications are under development. Now to help developers implement these OGC APIs, the OGC has published executable test suites uh, that are accessible through the OGC validator. Organizations are, are able to uh, test whether or not the implementations comply with a particular OGC standard. Uh, and then uh, if the implementation uh, passes the test, they can then apply for certification as OGC compliant. And what you can see on the slide are examples uh, from two products that have been certified as OGC compliant. There are several other products in the OGC pro product database. Now to get a product certified as OGC compliant, it's a five step process which involves an implementation passing the test hosted on the OGC validator. And then the organization responsible for that product applies for compliance certification. OGC staff then review the submission. And then the organization purchases um, a license to use the certification mark. And then the implementation is certified and listed on the OGC product uh, data, uh, database. If the product already uh, correctly supports the OGC standard, this whole process can take about 30 minutes. Uh, but of course, if there are uh, problems with the product, then uh, we go into an iterative process to support uh, the developer to help them get that product uh, towards uh, compliance. Now, we're already seeing significant impact of OGC APIs across the globe. And here I've got a couple of examples. The International Organization for Standardization, also known as ISO, has approved OGC API features uh, under the name ISO 19168, uh, Geospatial API for Features. Um, this uh, expands the reach of OGC API features across industry. And we also have 
um, the Inspire community, the European Union's Inspire community, um, the, uh, which has endorsed OGC API features as a good practice for the Inspire download service. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Inspire community, uh, this is the community of organizations that are implementing the Inspire Directive. The Inspire Directive uh, is a directive um, by the uh, European Union to enable the sharing of spatial data uh, across the U European uh, Union. So what can you expect as a developer? Well, as a developer, you can expect uh, a whole variety of resources on the OGC API um, website, which can be found at ogcapi.ogc.org. You'll find there links to the API specifications. You'll find links to information about past and future code sprints. You'll find uh, links to various videos that uh, showcase some of the capabilities of OGC APIs. These are APIs implemented by a whole variety of uh, organizations. Remember, as I said at the start of the presentation, we have more than 500 member organizations. Uh, and you find uh, videos from some of those organizations on the, on the website. You also find um, on the GitHub links to the GitHub repositories that have information from the standards working groups that are designing these OGC APIs. Uh, you'll also find links to the open APIs uh, definition documents describing the building blocks specified in these OGC API standards. And on this screen, you can see just a screenshot from one of those. Now let's have a look at an overview of one of the standards, OGC API features. Um, some of the resources offered by OGC API features include access to a landing page, as well as uh, a conformance declaration. The conformance declaration describes the capabilities offered by that particular implementation of OGC API features in this case. And then you have resources for accessing feature data, feature collections, um, as well as individual features. And then another example is OGC API processes. Remember I said OGC API processes uh, offers an interface for run, uh, around algorithms. Uh, and some of the resources are shown on this slide. You have a landing page uh, as well as a conformance declaration, which describes the capabilities. Then you've got lists of the processes uh, offered by that API, as well as the jobs that have been uh, executed or invoked with, uh, within that API. And you can see here a pattern in the sense that um, the landing page and conformance declaration uh, that similar resources can be found in all OGC API specifications. And OGC API environmental data retrieval, um, that standard also has the same um, landing page and conformance declaration resources you find in other standards, uh, with the landing page being the entry point and the conformance declaration uh, providing a description of the capabilities. Then you've got other resources such as uh, the uh, collections of um, special temporal data, as well as queries uh, as well. So you can see that same pattern um, is implemented across all of the OGC API standards. And we're seeing um, implementations of these standards. We're seeing implementations of these standards um, you know, take a variety of forms. So some of the products that have implemented OGC APIs have uh, implemented them within uh, single uh, solutions, whereby, uh, as illustrated on this slide, you can have a single solution implement multiple OGC API standards. In this case, you've got OGC APIs for tiles, maps, coverages, environmental data retrieval and features, uh, as well as others. Um, but we're also seeing implementations and deployments of OGC APIs as microservices, where each OGC API is deployed into its own um, uh, isolated um, container um, and uh, client applications being able to access uh, that OGC API through an open pot, um, but having each a API address specific uh, needs uh, from each uh, from its uh, container. So we're seeing deployment of OGC APIs both as single solutions uh, in monolithic uh, situations, but also as deployment, uh, we're also seeing deployment of OGC APIs as microservices, um, typically in containerized uh, 
um, and virtualization uh, based uh, infrastructure. So when can you expect these? Well, um, we've already developed um, OGC API, uh, pass for OGC API features and OGC API environmental data retrieval. Towards the end of the year, you'll find uh, additional OGC API standards published and we expect several more to be published um, in, in the coming year. Um, all of this has been done uh, publicly on uh, GitHub uh, repositories. And we're using testbeds, pilots, plugfests, research projects, interoperability experiments, sprints, and hackathons to help develop these uh, OGC API standards. We run an annual testbed, um, typically 10, um, 10 months long, uh, with about 30 participants uh, and about 10 or so uh, sponsors. If I can give you some examples of uh, typical OGC testbed uh, sponsors, you have uh, some of uh, the space agencies, for instance, NASA, uh, as well as the European Space Agency, but you also have uh, some uh, some of the defense organizations, uh, uh, parts of the US DOD and parts of the UK MOD, uh, also sponsoring some test beds, uh, as well as other uh, civilian uh, departments such as the US Geological Survey or USGS uh, and uh, US NOAA as well. So we have quite a variety of organizations that are sponsoring the development of OGC API standards. Um, as I mentioned, we run code sprints. Uh, we run about five to eight code sprints uh, a year. And the next code sprint is going to be July 21st to the 23rd, and it's going to focus on OGC APIs for processes, records, and coverages. Um, participation, registration, and participation in OGC API virtual code sprints is free. And you can find more information on the OGC API.ogc.org website. So what can you expect as an end user? Well, you can expect a variety of client applications. We're already seeing a, you know, a whole variety of applications, uh, client applications implemented in order to support uh, OGC APIs. Uh, we're seeing desktop GIS or desktop geographic information systems uh, implemented. Uh, we are seeing uh, 3D visualization applications, um, modeling and simulation applications. Access to OGC APIs with data search to these applications using OGC APIs. Uh, and we're seeing browser based uh, applications um, implemented uh, with the ability to support. OGC APIs. In this case, um, that's a, an implementation of a discrete global grid system. Uh, we're also seeing data science um, applications uh, implemented using Jupyter Notebooks, for instance, or, or Google Colab uh, to support uh, data science applications and artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and uh, similar um, in similar areas as well. And we're also seeing uh, augmented reality applications that are built on top of uh, OGC APIs, um, you know, uh, leveraging the capabilities of all the APIs that I've, uh, I've uh, described to you uh, today. Uh, so just to recap, we have a five-step process for sub specially enabling your API. First, you identify the type of location reference information that you would like to publish, whether it's vector or raster, whether it's satellite imagery, or perhaps it's a uh, relational database or an object-oriented database and so on. Uh, you then identify the related OGC API standard. Uh, you then familiarize yourself with the requirements documented in the OGC API standard. Uh, then use the open API definition documents uh, of the OGC API to help build your implementation. And then you test your implementation for compliance to the relevant OGC API standard. So in summary, OGC API standards are becoming a key requirement for web APIs, offering location referenced uh, information. Uh, we're seeing several technology strategies at a national level, at an, an international level, but also at in commercial organizations, we're seeing several technology strategies um, include uh, requirements for web APIs, for OGC, uh, for web APIs that comply to OGC API standards. And we're seeing early impact uh, already across government, private, and academic uh, sectors. Well, as I mentioned, for instance, the Inspire community area uh, early on from the European uh, Union. And then 
as a final point, what we are advising organizations is that they should start planning now to especially enable uh, the web APIs through OGC API standards. If you are building web APIs that contain, that offer location reference information, uh, we encourage you to start planning now for how to specially enable your web APIs through OGC API standards. And that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Gobe. Very interesting on OGC standards. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. We're going to have to move on to the next presentation. But just like with Yan, if you, if you attended that presentation, feel free to send Gobe questions in the chat. And we will move on to the next presentation now. Thank you, Gobe. Okay. Thank you.